Hi everybody and welcome to Heel Heat. This is our WWE show of the week. Um, this is going to be a really different show. First off, my name is George Coles. This is my tag team partner, Moondog Spot. Thank you. I'm Gary Rose, by the way. Um, the first thing we want to talk about, um, the whole Monday Night Raw was put on a somber note. We had the issue with Jerry the King Lawler had a heart attack at the announce table last night. Um, it was a very severe heart attack. I mean, they were using, for like two matches, they were doing uh, CPR. CPR on him until they could get the ambulance to take him. From what I understand, he was actually medically dead for 20 minutes. Um, he's he's better now, but not out of the woods. He's breathing on his own. Um, it's He's still in, in pretty bad shape, still in a lot of danger. Um, any of you guys that know out there that have had family members or have had heart attacks yourself it, it's not you know the first night it's like an earthquake yeah the first thing and then there's tremors afterwards mm -hmm. so he's not out of the woods continue to pray for Jerry Lawler continue to keep him in the thought in your thoughts and your prayers um, the guy he's put in 40 years in this business and he's given us countless hours of entertainment now, I know we were kind of crucial on him with the announcing lately, but th that's not that's just a character. That's not the man. The man, was, I mean, even the character back in the day was phenomenal. I mean, he's and, the, you know, he was one of the best in the business. And in all actuality, I think it's more the pairing of him and Cole that it, that is, is bad. It's not necessarily him as an announcer. Because whenever they bring JR back, he steps his leg up. He does. Up. And I think it's because he gets disappointed when JR is not there. I think so too. But, you know, keep please keep Jerry Lawler in your thoughts and prayers. Get well soon, King, from Heel Heat. Um, we love you. We want to see you back doing what you do, staring at the puppies, uh, cheering for the faces, you know, calling calling out CM Punk. Yeah. Well, you know, I mean, what, what are one of your favorite memories of Lawler? You know... There, there's a lot of them. I think one of the things, and I read this from one of the Bill After magazines when I was a kid, um, it was one of those did you know type questions. And the only person that beat Hulk Hogan, Andre the Giant, and Ric Flair in the, in the decade of the 80s was Jerry the King Lawler. No one else beat all three of them. Yeah, and plus during the 90s, you know, my, mine was the 90s. I. Uh, you know, where I was living at, we weren't really into Memphis wrestling. I was in Ohio. Um, but when he first came, showed up for the first King of the Ring pay-per-view and destroyed Bret Hart from behind, uh, that was, a, a, you know, one of the best heel moves in and a long time. Another really good moment, I'm, I'm sorry, I don't want to steal your thunder, but um, when he won the AWA World Heavyweight Championship <laughs> from, from Kerry Von Erich, I thought it was a really... Really good, really great worked match um, with the carry bleeding and them calling it off. I, I thought it was awesome. He still has that belt, mm -hmm. and uh, well, they haven't paid him for the match, so he had to keep it. <laughs> well, yeah, he didn't, pay, he didn't get paid for the match, so he kept the belt. Um, the guy's been a tremendous help for the business. He's one of the first guys to bring celebrities in, and you know, get well soon, Jerry. Uh, you're in my thoughts and prayers, along with mine, and I hope all you guys out there. You know, it, everything that you can say about him, whether you like him or not, the guy's given a lot to the business. I mean, just just keep him in your thoughts and prayers, and hopefully he has a speedy recovery. Now, you know, on to basically on to our show. The um, first thing I want to talk about is the, the Bret Hart CM Punk opening of the show. I thought it was tremendous. I, I really liked them two interacting with each other. Um, they played well off each other. The, I think the only thing that's a real downpour is that we're never going to get to see a Bret Hart CM Punk feud with a Bret Hart CM Punk match. Yeah, I mean that would be awesome. I mean, but we're about 15 years out of out of that for that for for Bret yeah. at least. I mean, Bret. Well, probably about 10 because they have yeah, basically a after a stroke. Yeah, after a stroke is nothing you know he hasn't been able to wrestle at all i mean he did a couple of those street fight type matches or yeah. tag matches where he spends most of the time on the outside hits his few signature moves and walks out exactly but for the most part it'd be, it'd be a good match to see it would have been it's one of those dream matches that you know everybody talks about i think the two of them 
had really good chemistry with each other. I know they have a tremendous respect for each other. And, you know, I'd, I'd really have liked to see that. Now, um, another thing I want to talk about, they're seeming to go into these these um, backstage segments to kill time on Raw. This one, I wasn't a huge fan of. I know you liked it more than me, the Sheamus depositions. And I'm not a, I'm not a fan of Sheamus at all. I'm very cru crucial of Sheamus. And uh, I thought it was excellent. Um, for what it was. I mean, it wasn't no Daniel Bryan and uh, Kane segment or nothing like that. There's no Harold in there. But there is a Ricardo Rodriguez. I thought Rod Ricardo was the highlight of it to me. His his facial expressions and his little add-ins were, were pure gold to me. Oh, yeah. I'm not a fan of Otunga. I'm not a fan of Sheamus. Um, to me, they're both mid-carters at best. I don't think Sheamus deserves to even be the world champion right no. now. I but, never thought he deserved to be the WWE champion. That was when they were going with that feud back in the day. I always That's the only time I ever went for Cena. Yeah. And, well, there was a few times. I wanted to see him win at WrestleMania this year. No, went for Cena. Well, you, you went for Cena at WrestleMania. I'm just kidding, guys. No, he's not. He's, let's go Cena! The whole time, like a little kid. I'm out there marking out for The Rock, and I'm pissing off everybody around us. I was just messing with you. Whatever, Cena fan. Anyway. You're a Cenophile. <laughs> I, li I, like, I like Cena versus Angle. His first match, I was really good. No, yeah, I mean, he's had some good moments. But anyways, let's not even... Yeah, uh, get into Cena <laughs> yet. We'll talk about him later on the show. All right. And then after that, you know, we got Punk vs. Orton, which ended up being a tag team match with Ziggler and Lawler joining in. Um, foreshadowed by what happened later to Lawler in the show. Um, other than that, the story was really good with Heyman coming down and basically him and Punk walking out on Ziggler. What's the best thing about Montreal? Leaving it. <laughs> and, you know, they had a really good interaction with, with uh, Vicky Guerrero. I think, excuse me, exactly. I think that uh, Paul Heyman is adding an extra dimension to the CM Punk heel character, where the fans still want to car want to cheer for Punk, but they don't. You know what the funny thing is? They were booing Heyman, but He's still cheering Punk. But still cheering ECW. ECW. Oh, yeah. I mean, the dichotomy was a little bit weird. It's all. It always is in Canada, especially in Montreal. I mean, that's bizarre land. Yeah. Another Jerry Lawler quote. Yeah. Keep it for you, Jerry. But, you know, they had. I thought it was a decent match. I really liked them walking out. The only thing I would have liked, it would have been a little bit of pepper on top of the steak, would have been um, if, on the way out, Heyman turned around and handed Ziggler his business card. That would have been sweet as shit. But, you know, there was. I liked it overall pretty good. Then we had um, the backstage segments with uh, Kane and Daniel Bryan again. They brought back the... Uh, the doctor. You! <laughs> You're evil! Uh, I, just li I liked it when the cane was going off. But you see, it's the doctor. Yeah. I really would have liked it to have been Harold, Scorpio Sky. Um, the guy's a tremendous worker. He deserves his time on TV. Um, as you can see in the past few weeks, he did really well with these two guys. He's a good worker. Check him out on YouTube. Look down. Just look up Scorpio Sky. On his indie shows and he's wrestling, people are yelling, calling him Harold and telling him, Shut up, Harold! Shut up, Harold! And cheering it through the crowd. So, I mean, the characters go over. I mean, it's up to Vince to sign the kid. He was even really good in the X Division tournament they had last month. Yeah. But the that was just a little bit of a drawback to me, It which led to, later on in the show, the Kane and Bryan going up against the primetime players for the number one contenders match. I love the choke slam. To, I love the finish. The finish was the shit. The finish was awesome. The choke slam into the pin. And then they had another segment coming off of that where Brian said, I didn't appreciate the choke slam. Team oh, friendship. But we won. <laughs> but they said they didn't like team friendship. So <laughs> hopefully they come up with a better name than Air Boom for them. Exactly. I'd still like it to be something goofy. Kind of like the Paul London and and uh, Brian Danielson, when they were the hybrid Dolphins, it was just goofy as shit. Yeah. But funny. I, I think Team Friendship's going to win it, dude. I'm telling you. I think. Because, you know, both of them, they'll try whatever. Yeah. And uh, this is the best pairing Kane has ever had. I mean, a lot of people liked it when he was with the Big Show because they were so big. Or with his brother, The Undertaker. You know, because the Brothers of Destruction deal. Or with Xbox or RVD. But I, I just, to me, Daniel Bryan just brings out so much more in Kane and I like him more. I mean, I, between him and the Taker, I've always liked Kane better. But 
there, there's just something with him and Daniel Bryant working together. I like it. I'm really and, onto it. I, I really like the X-Pac and Kane team, and I it, it kind of reminds me of that, the way the gimmick's playing out. Um, I think Kane is tremendous. This is a perfect role for him at this point in his career. Plus, it clears up the, the world title picture for other guys to be in there. You know, and it brings in, you know, lets guys like Orton stay at the top, Miz, you know, got other guys, while these two who, who should be title contenders are wrestling for the tag team titles, basically. Yeah, it gives, it, it gives him another, you know, gives D. Bryan another belt. Which doesn't hurt. <laughs> and, and, and you know, after that, coming off that, I want to talk about our um, our question of the week from last week, which was, what do you think is the best faction, and what do you think has been the best faction in wrestling? I sent Carl in a little bit there. You did, possibly. Now, um, I want to talk about what some of our friends have told us. Uh, the first comes from our friend Lou over at the Deadly Sins. The best faction, I would have to say, for me was T-Bag. Haas, Shelton, and Angle, they worked so well together. I'd agree the only thing that holds them back to me is they weren't a team long. I do believe that at one point they had the tag titles and the world title. At the same time. At the same time. I really I really liked them. I really thought that Shelton and Charlie were going to be future stars. Um, they're a team now in Ring of Honor as the world's greatest tag team together still. Um, Kurt Angle's one of, the, one of the really good workers in the business. And has been for a long time. I just wish they would have done a little bit more, personally. Then we want to go on to some of what our what our other guys said. Um, this one's from Paul over at the Deadly Sins at well as well. As for the best faction with me, it's a tie. You can't talk about factions and not mention the Four Horsemen, but the but the one that, in my opinion, took it to the next level and made factions cool again was the NWO. Probably the two that are the, the slam dunk easy selections for everybody. Um, they're really good good answers. I like both of them. I like the NWO when it was a smaller group before they started adding everybody and their mom in there. Vincent, um, Scott Norton, Disciple, yeah, I agree Kurt Henning. No, Kurt Henning is the man. But anyway. And then we got another answer from our friend, the mass tweeter. Mass Tweaker puts, I'm partial to the Four Horsemen. I remember watching the original Horsemen as a kid and never really seen anything like it before. So it was new to me. Also, unfair to them, they weren't able to utilize the internet to their favor, same way the NWO were, mainly because there was no internet at their inception. The new Horsemen of the 90s never got the same push as the NWO did, and rightfully so, because their time had passed. Really, really good, valid points there. Um, I, I agree with our fans for the most part. That, that Four Horsemen was the best faction ever. They were the first. Um, you had guys like Flair, Arn Anderson, Tully Blanchard, Chris Benoit, Barry Windham, Ole Anderson, Sid Vicious, Paul Roma, <laughs> Brian Pillman. Paul Roma. But, you know, it's a really good They're faction. Worse. They set the bar really high. Um, they've been often imitated, never duplicated. But I'm going to give you another pick, but first I'll let you know, Gary, what was your pick? I personally like the Dangerous Alliance. You know, they had the, the qualities of the Horsemen and the qualities of the Heenan family, and you just merged it together. You know, not all of them had to come out at the same time as long as Paul was there, but when they were all together, they all worked for one goal, to get the goal. And at one point, everybody, every title except for the world title in WCW was held by the Danger Lions at one time. And you got guys like Rick Rude, Steve Austin, Bobby and Arn Anderson, and um, Zabisco, Larry Zabisco, and Medusa. Medusa, yeah. And you know, at the time, the funny thing is, at the time, Steve Austin was the low man on the totem pole. Yeah, and look how times have changed. Yeah, but you could see it even back then, oh, that yeah. he was going to be a superstar. Well, I mean, you look at this way, I mean, back then he was two, three years in the business, and they've already put him with guys like Rick Rude, make, you know, working under Paul, or, you know, working under Paul. You know, they knew he was Paul a star. Hayden. Yeah, sorry, they knew he was a star. It no, just no, but we got people that didn't watch that, didn't watch yeah. our show. It just, it just didn't come out yet. And, and it was, it's a tremendous faction, highly unrated in the annals of history. Personally, uh, mine, I'm going to go with. I, I agree with the fans, our friends. 
Um, but I'm going to say a different one just to throw a devil's advocate out there. D Generation X, the first two um, versions of it, the DX with Sean, Sean Hunter, China, and Rude. And then the second version with the DX Army with Hunter, X Pac, and the Outlaws. You know, this funny thing is, I don't want to interrupt you, but my favorite includes Rude. Your favorite includes Rude. And the Hor- and then uh, NWO, NWO includes Rude. He's a, he was a tremendous worker. He's someone that's been really kind of forgotten by time. A guy that's not in the Hall of Fame that should be. Yep. Definitely. He definitely should be in there in the Hall of Fame. I mean, if Coco Beware is in there, then. Come on. But, Sorry to interrupt you. We'll finish. No, that's, that's okay. And that's really all I had to say. DX was really revolutionary at the time. At, at first, they were just an NWO ripoff, but they took it so much further than the NWO oh, yeah. ever did. I mean, that was the reason I kept watching WWE. Right. Or WWF back then. And then off of that, our, our question of the week for next week is, what do you think the best tag team finisher is? Let us know. Hit us up. Put it down there in the comments down where. Down there. Hit us up on Twitter. Hit us up on our Facebook. Let us know what you think. What do you think the best tag team finishing move in wrestling has been? And then, you know, from that I want to talk about, we had the um, Alberto Del Rio versus Tyson Kidd. A really solid match that I think could have been a little bit better. They should have had Sheamus interrupt and like Kid get the win in, in Canada. The place would have blew up. Oh yeah, and that's another. Would have had another dichotomy to that to that uh, match. Yeah, and it would have added more to the to the uh, match that happened later on with Sheamus, Sheamus and Ricardo Rodriguez. Yeah. But, you know, it's the build for Sheamus and Del Rio is good. I'm tired of seeing the two of them wrestle each other. I hope I'm bored of it. I hope this Sunday is the end of their feud. I pray for it. Yeah. And, you know, then we got, and then we had Sheamus wrestle in Otunga. Um, the only thing I've got, match. the only highlight really is he hit the broke kick after the match and had the two GMs fighting with each other over who should discipline him. Which ended up being, you know, the next time you hit the broke kick, we're stripping you the title. This is world title. This is world championship decisions, dog. I got this. And you know, um, I really like Booker as a GM. The AJ as a GM. It was. It's a one trick pony for her to screw over Punk and Brian. It worked, but now it's stale. Exactly. They need to bring her back into being just crazy AJ on the show. Personally, in my opinion. And you know, take her out of the pantsuit because you can't really see. Exactly. You want to see the, the beef and the. I want to see the goodies. Um, for the goodies. Sorry. Hmm? I want to. I want to see her puppies. Okay. Good Jerry quote. There you go. And then there was another match there, uh, the Rey Mysterio versus Cody Rhodes match. Wasn't the best match in the world, but it did finish well. Miz comes up, calls the interference, and then calls Ray the match. And he's standing over Ray talking some shit. Cody comes from behind and hits the crossroads. So, I mean, Cody's wanting his belt back. Cody, it puts Cody back in the intercontinental picture. And also, I think it's a slight hint to the face turn for the Miz, which they're probably going to do because he has, um, what is it? Uh, Marine, Marine 3, Three coming out that he's going to be in a direct heat DVD movie. But it's been said over the years faces sell better on these movies than heels do. Well, that's why the Marine 2 did so well because. DiBiase was a heel. Yeah. And DiBiase didn't have the charisma to pull off a movie. No. He's not his dad. No. I mean, he's good, don't get me wrong. Oh, no. No. But, you know, then after that, we had the the main event, which really was just a segment, was a Hart interview with Cena, which brought out CM Punk again, without Paul Heyman this time. And CM Punk just ripped into both Hart and Cena. And And it was awesome. And you know the CM Punk, CM Punk and Bret Hart all through the night had tremendous interaction with each other. Like I said, it's a shame that they don't get to work with each other at some point because they were they were riffing off each other really good. Um, Cena stepped his game up really good in this one. I thought this was one of the better Cena promos in a while. Oh, and um, I thought it was a really good Punk promo, hampered by the Jerry Lawler thing. At that point, you could see it in his face that he was. He was crying. And you could tell CM out. Punk CM Punk's eyes were bright red and looked like he's been crying all night and you gotta know that half these guys in the locker room grew up watching Jerry Lawler and he's probably the reason why 
a lot of them are in the business, and you know, he, and they got to res they respect the shit out of them, as do we. And out of that respect, do you want to do it? I say we do it. The heel of the week, normally we give it to somebody that did something heelish on the show, Jerry the King Lawler. He's been a heel for a really long time. Yeah, Every, during the 80s, like you said, he beat all the, all the big names. He was a heel in ECW. He went over... He went into Burnt the, Tommy's testicle. Well, he went into ECW, probably one of the most hostile crowds you could ever go into, and just ripped into ECW in front of that crowd. And to do that, to me, that takes a lot of cojones. Well, uh, the best line he ever says, uh, is this arena made out of toilet paper because it's full of shit? You know, that was just, I mean, one of the best lines. I, I also liked, and I'm a Taz fan, uh, when that Taz was wrestling on Raw, he's like, he looked a lot bigger on TV, didn't he? No, the Lucky Charms box. There it is. <laughs> yeah. But anyway, yeah, that, Ariel that's Ariel Week. Ariel the Week, Jerry the King Lawler for everything he's done. Please continue to say prayers. Keep them in your thoughts. Um, make Jerry, we hope you do have a speedy recovery from me and Gary both. I mean, we love your work. We think you're, you're a great heel. We think you should have been a world champion at WWE. You did get a world championship run with the AWA title. And, and all his Memphis belts, too. I mean, he's the one guy that has held more championships than anybody else. And, you know, basically that's all we have for this show. I'm sorry about the somber tone to the whole thing. But with that being said, um, you know, with the Jerry Lawler situation, it kind of puts a damper on shows like ours. And, and we promise that we're going to try to be in a better mood for the TNA show this week. We promise. And, you know, all in all together, it was a pretty good show. It was dampened by the events happening with Lawler. We hope he gets well soon. Also, before we go off here, I want to send a shout out to Row Web Designs. He made our new logo, which we're plastering all over the place on Twitter, Facebook, on YouTube. It's tremendous. We love it very much. Thank you, Warren, over at Row Web Designs. You did a really good job. We're going to put a link down here for you guys to check him out. Down for, there. Down there. For all your needs. Um, but basically, that's all we have for the show. I'm George Coles. I'm Gary Rhodes. And this has been Heal Heat.